This is a clean room facility and it's uh, basically got 250 square metre footprint. There's two identical uh, clean rooms, uh, mirror images of each other. Um, uh, in these clean rooms we have grade A, B, C and D classifications, where A is the highest classification, working out to B, C and D. Where we're standing now we're going towards D and to C, B to A. Uh, classification is based on the level of particulates, which is at very low levels. Um, and then on the basis of bacterial levels, for example in a grade A, no bacteria are allowed. Um, so then the people who work in these areas have to gown up, they have to wear sterile gowns, they have to wear uh, masks, uh, hoods, goggles and so on, where the intention is that the person will not contaminate the product or contaminate the area. Um, also behind that then you have quality systems, which are uh, quality management systems, which are there to uh, manage the whole area to manage how we make our decisions uh, based on the data that we see from our environmental monitoring and so on. Um, uh, and then you also have a, a series of inter interlocked um, airlocks where as you enter these areas you have to go from one to the other and you have this positive cascade of air outwards which is pushing out any particulates or contaminants. A clean room is an area which has a very, very low level of particulates and particulates can either be viable or non-viable. Viable particulates are bacteria, yeast and moulds, and non-viable particulates are pieces of dust or debris, whatever the case may be. So a clean room has a classified areas working out from grade A, B, C and D. So grade A, for example, has a, you're only allowed 100 particulates in total per cubic foot. The people who work in these areas are trained operators. Uh, they're trained in how to gown to enter the area. They're trained in all the aseptic techniques that they must adhere to. In terms of getting into the area, um, operators have to first of all take off all their outdoor clothing. They put on what we call scrubs or undergarments, like you'd see in ER. Uh, then as you work your way into the areas, you have to wash your hands, you do your hand scrubs. You then put on a sterile gown, sterile mask, sterile goggles, sterile hood, sterile booties. The way that they put these on, they put them in, on in a septic manner so that they don't contaminate the outside. So to get into the clean room, into the grade AB zone, is a, quite an achievement and takes a lot of training and a lot of skill to do that. And it's an area that when you go into it to work there, you go in and stay there for a reasonable period of time because there's quite a bit of work on getting in and likewise getting out. Um, so typically people in these areas go in and work on their focused tasks for two to three hours minimum. In general terms, in clean rooms, um, uh, operators work in these rooms to uh, fill or uh, manufacture sterile products. Uh, basically, by producing the products in these areas, you're protecting the product. You're protecting the product from contamination, be that viable particulates like bacteria, yeast and moulds are actually non-viable particulates like dust or debris. And again, all the tasks, all the steps that we take in terms of our gowning and working in these graded areas protects that product. In this facility, we expand or manufacture stem cells, which have to be sterile for injection into the patient. In this facility, there's a team of eight people. You have a production manager who has stem cell technologists reporting into them. They basically manufacture the cells. You have a quality manager who manages uh, quality technicians who do their environmental monitoring in the areas. Environmental monitoring is required to show that the areas are meeting all the criteria in terms of bacteria, i.e. very low levels and very low levels of particulates. You also have contract cleaners who come in to clean the area, disinfect it every evening. You also have an engineering person who maintains the air handling facility which supplies all the filtered air into the clean rooms. So then the operatives themselves, the stem cell technologists, they basically manufacture the stem cells. By that they um, harvest them, they add media, they bring it to its different pas passages in terms of growth, they check it for viability, they move it on to the next stage. And this is a process that runs over three, four weeks.